What's good, y'all? Welcome to Ready to Tape, and we finna hop straight into this one because, man, I'm excited. The Raiders go and dominate against the Jaguars, and honestly, I was it was kind of unexpected to me because I thought it was gonna be a battle between depth chart players, and they were gonna really compete, but at the end of the day, the Raiders get an early lead, and I wanna contribute that to Stidham, man. I think that dude is going to be a solid QB, too. I like the way he went out there, and he was able to orchestrate the offense, and you can really see how the rhythm was different when you changed from him and Mullins. And I know Stidham has been with this offense before with Josh McDaniels. That's probably why it was why the offense was really able to run the way it was. And I see it just being a very good asset to have somebody behind Derek Carr that's able to be competent within the offense and really be able to push them down the field at the same time. Now, I know it's only week one of the preseason and it was a Jaguar. So at the end of the day, it's like you faced the worst competition from last year that you could have possibly faced. And that's what we just played. And I'm not going to take anything away from our team because I think we've seen a lot. But at the same time, I know that and I want to say that for all the haters out there that are going to say, oh, it's just the Jags and it's only the preseason. I know this. I'm looking at our players and I'm doing due diligence. All right. But moving on, one thing we have to talk about that's really the elephant in the room. I mean, let's be honest. Brandon Parker at left tackle is a no-go. We know this. We drafted Brandon Parker and we've seen him play left tackle and we know he's better at right tackle. Now, he's not the best right tackle, but he is definitely better at right tackle than he is at left tackle. So, and then he was going against the number one pick as well. So, that was only more competition for him and we've just seen that it's not going to work out. Can you imagine him playing left tackle? Going against Khalil Mack and Nick Bosa, or excuse me, Joey Bosa. I mean, both of them. Shit, we playing the Niners this year, too. So, at the same time, it's like, I I don't see why we did that. But at the same time, this is a new regime. And they probably wanted to just see him. They probably just wanted to see him. But we know as Raider fans that he is not a left tackle. But moving down to something good is Alex Leatherwood. And think about it. For those who haven't been following me, the last couple of lives, the last couple of lives we've done, let's be real. I... We've sat there and we looked at how everybody was talking down on Alex Leatherwood, how Thayer Mumford was supposedly taking the first team reps, which he probably was. And you know, nothing, nothing, no hanging on that. But you see the depth chart come out and then Leatherwood is number one. And then see how fast people are going to switch up and say, oh, well, look at this and look at this and look at this. And they'll say that, oh, well, Thayer Mumford should be the first trainer. Thayer Mumford should start over Alex Leatherwood or Brandon Parker should... Hold up, let's pump the brakes. Why are we riding off Alex Otherwood so fast when he's only a second year player competing with a dude that's been in the league for four or five years in Brandon Parker? You see what I'm saying? So let's give Alex Otherwood a chance to progress, develop, and become an offensive lineman like we did with Colt Miller. Like every team does with every offensive lineman. So let's go ahead and give Alex Otherwood his flowers for playing a good game. It's still early, but he played a good game and it was a clean game. And that leads me to saying Lester Khan is a good decision by the coaches because he's playing very well too. Now, this is all contributed, I feel like, to good coaching. Because you look at the defense side, of the defense side of the ball and the defense was coached very well. And I think we're seeing the beginning of, we're seeing what we could potentially see in the regular season on the offensive side of the ball and the defense side of the ball. Because who else are we going to see run the football? Josh Jacobs, Zamir White, Kenny and Drake. We're not going to see anybody else run the football, really, maybe Brandon Bolden. But even then, you got to take into consideration that these are, these are the dudes that are going to be out there. So we're seeing the start of how this running game would look. Josh McDaniels has proven that running back by committee is actually true. It's actually going to happen. Um, the screen game was really in full effect. And I think what we've seen today was really an audition for the offensive line to be honest, because you're trying to get those screen players in. You want to see how those offensive linemen react, how they how they are able to engage with the defender, release, and they get downfield. How athletic are they really in open space? I think that was actually a very good insight on how this offense is going to look. And then you want to look on the defense side of the ball. When, you, when I seen Abram at single high and then Merrick drop down to cover the tight end, you had Nate Hobbs in the slot. I was like, okay, I'm getting an idea of how this defense is really going to look. Obviously, without the Pro Bowlers and Paramount, and Chandler Jones and uh, Max Crosby. So I'm excited for this week. I'm excited for this upcoming week and everything to see. I can't wait to get the film so we can break that down. That's going to be dope. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Y'all know what it is. Ready to take and check out Redemption Brand if y'all want to get some gear like this hat or a first inaugural t-shirt that are out. Make sure to check out Redemption Brand though. Y'all know what it is, man. I appreciate y'all being with us. Until next time, ready to take.